Good afternoon, it's Amy here from Temple of She. <sighs> it's good to be here with you this afternoon. I wanted to jump on and have a chat with you about sex. Let's talk about sex. I wanted to come on and do this video and talk about the reality of sex and a lot of stuff that people don't talk about and a lot of stuff that people are too shy to talk about, questions that they're too shy to ask or too embarrassed to ask, and just the reality of what sex actually is. Hey, Eileen. And um, bring to light some of the stuff that porn doesn't show us or deliberately distorts um, so that we have this really screwed up perception of what sex is. And um, also, I want to give you one of the most hilarious things um, that I have encountered or, or um, experienced that was the biggest turnoff I could possibly experience um, during a sexual encounter with a guy. So big tip, biggest turnoff you can do really as a guy. So I want to talk to you today about sex. Um, the reality is that sex is a basic need. It is a need for us as human beings. We like, we need shelter, food, water, and we need um, sex. It is one of the basic human instincts and needs that we have as human beings. Um, it is an energy that is within us and you will feel it comes at certain times and particular things turn that energy on. And that's the concept of turn on. And we all have that. There's all different things um, that turn that on for us. Sometimes we've switched it off through trauma or through experience. Um, sometimes people get to a certain point in their lives and their hormones change and the, turn, the ability to turn on decreases quite significantly. So we all have this need and this want to experience sex. It's good fun. We all like it. Um, it's a good hit of dopamine, oxytocin, all the feel good stuff. And it makes us kind of feel good about ourselves. Sometimes we have shit sex. Sometimes we have great sex. Um, but it's something we all do. A lot of couples talk about it. They whinge and moan how it's shit in long-term relationships. It's, it's something that we all know about and we all have encounters with, whether we are virgins and haven't gone there yet or have a lifelong history of sexual encounters. It's something we can all relate to. So the reality is that sex is a messy business. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. You know, the, the greatest example, and I don't mean greatest as in good, I mean greatest as in big example that we have of sex and what it's like, what to expect, how it works, and there's the phone ringing, <laughs> is porn. Porn shows us the unrealistic expectations of what sex actually is. It shows us immaculate men and women. It shows us men with large penises. It shows us clean sex, unless you're looking for a particular type of sex. But it doesn't show us the reality of it. It doesn't show us all the body fluids that are involved in sex. And that's a reality of it. We are human beings that are 70% water and have a shitload of body fluids that have all kinds of different functions and different orifices that they come out of. So involved in sex, we have saliva, obviously. And we have these things called mucous membranes, which are in our mouth and they're in our vaginas. Absolutely, Beck. So unrealistic in so many ways, even with the anatomy that they represent. And that is one of the reasons why the women today have the biggest hang-ups about our vulva and our labia and what they look like is because pornography has shown us for about 40 years now that a vagina should look like this petite little girl's vagina that's very neat with no labia that's flopping or hanging or anywhere else and it, it started in the centerfolds um, of um, pornographic magazines and they didn't show women with large labia because they felt that was more graphic so we'll stick with the less graphic and the very neatly closed little labia that are, are neat and tidy and that became the norm so that was what was then portrayed as pornography went to a video industry and a movie industry and that's become what we see and know today it's all the pictures 
And only now it's starting to become a little bit more common to see different shape sizes of labia, if you like. So it is extremely unrealistic and it's just another source of media that has contributed to our feeling state around our ability to self-love and self-worth and body love and body image and all of that good stuff. So going back to the body fluids of sex and the realism of sex, we have in our mouths and in our vaginal um, canal mucous membranes. And what that means is it's, it's a moist area. It produces fluid. So our vagina contains her own environment. She produces her own fluids, just like we produce for saliva in our mouth. Our body fluids contain our DNA, it contains our bacteria, it contains our antibodies. If you ha have some kind of infection, it contains that infection. And that's where the whole STD thing comes into it and how they're contained in body fluids. So that's why STDs are a thing with sex because you're exchanging body fluids and your mucous membranes absorb body fluids um, and bacteria in other body fluids. So that's how sex, um, sexually transmitted diseases kind of come across with body fluids is the mucous membranes that are happening. So we've got saliva, we've got vaginal secretions, we've got vaginal lubrication. So as a woman becomes really turned on, her vagina becomes wet, what we call wet. And that is a vagina lubricating itself. It's got all these glands that excrete fluid to moisten her up so that sex is not painful and that sex can actually happen quite pleasurably for the woman. We then have the skein's gland, which is in the vagina and is a bulb that fills with fluid as a woman becomes turned on and it swells. And that is where a woman ejaculates from or a woman squirts from. And that's a whole nother fluid of its own. So that's another fluid that's involved in sex. You then have the semen and the pre-cum and all of the, the sperm and the, the fluid that's involved with that. With men, you then got blood. So if a woman is having sex during menstruation or if it's rough sex and someone has cut themselves or something, there's, there's another fluid involved. And then you also have fecal matter, poo. <laughs> That can be involved in sex as well, if that's the way you choose. There are many, many body fluids involved in sex. Sex is messy. It's sweaty. You've then got sweat involved in it as well. So there's so many body fluids involved. It smells. Each one has their own smell, their own odour. Sex is this primal, messy thing. And that's the way God intended it to be. So these pornography videos and things that give us this unrealistic expectations that it's this neat little package that doesn't make any noise, that doesn't smell, that doesn't do any things, is completely unrealistic. So then as women, as we go and explore our sexuality, we go in with these expectations that it's going to be this nice little, nice little neat box that my fanny's not going to make any weird farting noises as it's penetrated and the air expels or all of this stuff because we've been told or taught or shown otherwise. But the reality is our body does all kinds of weird and wonderful things, especially when it's in the state of turn on. And we it, it gets messy like i've said and you know part of sexual maturity and actually stepping up and having consensual full-bodied yes sex is accepting that and embracing that and knowing and understanding that that is a part of what sex is all about and enjoy that you know when you when you look at oral sex a big part of that is yes you're gonna have to actually taste the body fluids of the person you are enjoying that with and of course this whole lot of stuff comes into that and what a person eats is excreted in their body fluids as well so your diet dictates the taste of your body fluids and there's all kind of myths and stories out there about foods you can eat that change the taste of your body fluids and all of that sort of stuff but i'm not going into that but sexual maturity is embracing that sex is wet Sex is moist and it is full of all of your partner's sexual juices, their body fluids. And when done in a safe way, there is no harm that can come to you from those body fluids. It's a part of it. And when you can fully embrace that and fully be with your partner, those smells, those odours, those textures, those sliding wet surfaces are all going to contribute 
to your level of turn on, your level of pleasure, your level of enjoyment and the level that you can embrace and enjoy your partner and give and receive pleasure with them. Because when you are so busy being turned off by, oh my God, that's wet, that smells, that's funny, oh God, there was a strange noise, your ability to receive pleasure decreases. So I want to tell you about one of the biggest turn-offs that I have experienced with a man. And this is like a number one top tip for anyone, man, woman, whoever you are, anyone who is sexually active. I had just had sex with this guy and it was fun, great. And we finished and he sat on the edge of the bed and he kind of picked up his hands and he was like referring to the bodily fluids that were on his hands and the moistness and the stickiness and all of our sexual body fluids. And he was like, Ooh, I need to go have a shower. And instantly I just recoiled and felt, wow, he finds my sexiness repulsive. I know that's not what actually was happening, but it was the biggest turn off to see a man who found what is produced as a result of turn on to be a turn off and actually disgusting and repulsive. And I'm not saying that you need to roll around in each other's sexual juices, go ahead if you want to, but in fully embracing your sexual maturity, you need to accept that that's a part of turn on, that is a part of pleasure and embrace it, play with it. Don't be inhibited by it. Don't be turned off by it. Don't be shy about it or needing to hide or cover up or, you know, embrace it, have these conversations. One of the biggest things about sexual encounters is communication and having these conversations with your partner with the person you are experiencing this with and you know how do you feel about this how does that make you feel full communication elevates your ability to receive and give pleasure so that is what i wanted to talk to you about the realism of sex absolutely back sex is messy and magnificent only if you embrace it if you are inhibited in any way by it, it's going to reduce your ability to experience pleasure, especially for women. We are full sensory beings. For us to experience our full potential of pleasure and orgasm, we have to have every part of our senses that we use in sex feeling comfortable and turned on. And if there is any nagging thought there, it's going to reduce that limit that limitlessness of pleasure. Thank you so much for all you gorgeous people for joining me. If you have any questions, if you want to know anything at all, drop them in the comments and I will be happy to answer. Go and have some juicy, messy, fabulous sex and embrace your body fluids. Bye-bye. <laughs>